Hello, everyone. Um, yes, I'm going to talk to you about real time uh, in the browser in his XMPP. Uh, I'll try and keep it uh, quite light because uh, if you're feeling like me, you're a bit frazzled and tired. So, OK, so what is XMPP? So it's the Extensible Messaging and Presence Protocol. Um, and this was developed back in 1998, a time when. Um, People had lots and lots of different IM clients. You had AOL Instant Messenger, Yahoo Messenger. Um, people had ICQ, so you, you know, you'd hear your sort of uh, cue to go, uh oh, every couple of minutes. Um, and it was a bit of a rubbish situation because some of your friends would be on one, another set would be on another one, and you'd have to either run them all or you know, ignore some friends or not talk to them online. It was a bit of a crap situation. So uh, some guys got together and they thought, well, what we'll do, we'll build a system where you, know, you can have lots and lots of different servers, um, but they'll all be able to talk to each other. Uh, and it was originally built as a, an application called Jabber, um, and, but since we, it's, it's changed to XMPP when it became part of the ITF. Um, and it's not a single server or a single piece of code. It's a set of standards. Um, so anyone can implement it. You can have proprietary servers, open source servers, uh, and there's lots and lots out there. Uh, yeah, and so the big advantage of it is that it's federated, so all the servers can talk to each other without doing any extra coding. Um, so, uh, I'd like a show of hands, who here uses XMPP? Okay, uh, keep your hands up. Um, that's not right. Okay, so who of you here uses WhatsApp? Yeah, that's a few more. Okay, cool. So WhatsApp is basically a hacked version of XMPP. Um, they just used some of the bad bits and not some of the good bits, but anyway. Um, who here uses Facebook chat? Yeah, okay. Uh, who here uses HipChat? Cool, right, so you're all using XMPP, so I think there's maybe two or three people in the room that haven't put their hand up. So, who here has a smartphone? Yeah, so you all use XMPP, you just don't know about it. Um, yeah, it's widely used in areas such as finance, uh, government. It's used for a lot of messaging systems. Uh, companies that do building management use it quite a lot. Well, my point is, it's often not advertised that it's been used. So, why do I think XMPP is important? Well, we're seeing the continuing growth of real time on the web. Um, and you see people bringing up re uh, new real time systems all, uh, quite often. And you watch how it goes, and they just keep making the same mistakes that were solved in XMPP about 12 years ago, 14 years ago. Um, and then you see them try and do things like, oh, it would be really cool if we could run it on multiple servers, all talk to each other. And they do this hacky piece of crap. Um, again, these are already problems that have been solved with XMPP. So people shouldn't keep making the same mistakes. Um, the other in area where it's quite interesting as well is uh, with the rise of WebRTC. So, uh, peer to peer sessions, all great, but there's no signal in, in WebRTC. So, how do you find each other? And the way that's done currently is people use these crappy meet me URLs. So, you both go to a website, you both maybe have to agree some terms, and you maybe have to be tracked, and maybe this system doesn't have all the features you want, but this one does, and your friends don't like that one. So, why do that when you can both just log into an account and share the details directly? Um, and there's also movement back towards the sort of uh, decentralized web. Um, so the, the Snowden revelations came out. Um, and you know, big targets like Facebook and Google and Apple, it's very easy for people to go in and request information. Um, whereas if we're all running sort of smaller servers and smaller groups, actually to get information about what you're up to is a lot more difficult. Um, and then the last point is, if you also use XMPP, you don't just get some chat messaging stuff. You get things like presence, which is I'm uh, available right now, I'm away, I'm busy. You get address books, you get PubSub, you get uh, peer to peer session set up. You get tons and tons of stuff for free without doing any extra work. So I'm quickly going to go through some of the fundamentals of XMPP. Um, so uh, stanzas, these are just some of the terms you hear. Stanzas are just chunks of XML. Um, so there's three uh, basic stanzas. So one of them is um, message, or, uh, which is just sort of you know, chat messages, sending updates. 
the second is presence, which is basically I'm online, I'm offline. Uh, there's a really cool feature called priority, which I'll talk about in a second. And then the third one is IQ or information query, which has uh, set and get, so it's basically like your very simple HTTP verbs. Okay, then there's also the JID. So the JID, or the Jabber ID, uh, it consists of three parts. So first of all, you have your server. So in this example, it's example.org. Um, I then log in as user at example.org. Um, I then have this third thing on the end uh, called a resource, which is really interesting. So even though this was designed back in uh, 1998, it was designed with multiple devices in mind. Um, so. Going back to the presence uh, stanza I talked about a second ago, if I'm on my laptop and working away, my laptop has a presence priority of uh, five. And so when people send messages to my bearjid, so that's uh, user example.org, messages get routed through to my laptop. When I walk away from my laptop and have my phone, which has been happily sitting there at a present priority of four, my laptop goes to sleep drops down to presence priority of one, and now anyone sending messages to just my bare JID will get routed through to me on my mobile phone. So you can always be sure that messages get to the, peop get to the device that the person is most likely to be using. Uh, so clients. So um, what we say with XMPP is that your client should be very, very light. Um, and this is really good for uh, mobile phone usage because we don't expect the clients to do any work whatsoever, so you save a lot of battery that way. Uh, you connect to the server in three different, with three standard ways of connecting. One is just a standard socket. Uh, the other one is a long polling setup, and the newer one is the web sockets. Um, and the other thing that's really good is, unlike uh, other systems which poll a server to do real time, um, it, that's quite heavy on your server and your clients. You're setting up new connections. You, you're like, is there any information? No. Oh, thanks. Great. Um, so it's, it's very intensive. Uh, whereas with XMPP, data gets pushed. So um, if you imagine kids sat in the back of the car, you know, are they, are they there yet? Are we there yet? Very annoying. Um, what we do in this case is just shut up, and I'll tell you when we're there. Very different. Um, servers, so all, they do, all they're, they're really there for is to root messages. Uh, they set up these secure connections between each other, um, and they handle the authentication. And then the third part is the components, which is pretty much where anything you develop is going to be uh, held. So the servers allow you to implement custom business logic. Um, you can have standard components, or you could do something you know, specific to your use case. Uh, and a nice way to build components in JavaScript is to use Node X and PB component. Um, and additionally, sorry, uh, they're completely server agnostic. So I could write my code in JavaScript and connect it to a server running Lua. I could then get rid of that server and replace it with a Java server, and I don't have to change anything about my code. All right, so why don't we see it being used by web developers? Well, the big advantage of XML is the extensibility part. Um, but the big disadvantage to developers is in order to achieve that extensibility, we use XML. And uh, I don't know about you guys, but when uh, my sort of um, interactions with XML have been via SOAP, and that's a horrible experience. It's also not very nice to deal with it in the browser. It can be slow, and you can sometimes lose data and things like that. Um, and also, when you compare it to JSON, XML seems really verbose and ugly and old-fashioned. It's just blech. So, um, what I've done is I've created a library called uh, XMPB for the web. Uh, and what this does is it converts messages to JSON for you on the server, um, and then sends it down to you over a web socket. And this makes it much nicer to develop applications uh, using XMPB, but not be exposed to any of the, the nasty stuff that, as web developers, we don't really like. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is probably get this completely wrong. This will be the funny part of the talk. Um, I'm going to do a live demo and show you how easy it is to build a very simple application, but I'm going to need some of you to help me out. So um, it's a participation exercise. OK. Um, so I'm going to write a little application here. And what it's going to do is listen for incoming chat messages, draw a little circle on the screen, and allow 
you guys to move it around. Um, but the interesting bit here is you, you're all going to connect on servers all around the world, and you're going, they're going to talk to my server and perform the actions. So if you uh, pop over to that URL, um, and in the meantime, I will start coding up uh, something. So I'm just going to drop this over here. Oops. OK, so the first thing I need to do is log into my server. So let's get that done. Um, so all I have in this, very much like the, the clients you'll be loading, is an MD5 library, because a hash of a string uh, is 0 to 9, A to F. Take the first six characters. That gives me a nice hex color code. Uh, I have jQuery, and I have a WebSocket, which is being delivered from XMPP for the web. Um, so. OK, so that's listening for my uh, incoming connection request. And now I'm going to ask it to log in for me. And for any of you about to get excited, ha ha ha. OK, cool. Right, I'm online. I'm connected. Uh, so I can start doing nice things. So uh, when I was talking about the JID just now, you'll see that I'm connected as Lloyd at BuddyCloud.org, and I have my resource, which has been assigned to me by the server. Um, I could ask for a specific one, but I didn't in this case. Um, BuddyCloud, coincidentally, is a uh, distributed social network that I work on. Um, you should check it out. It's, it's uh, cool to play with. OK, so next thing, I need to draw a circle on the screen when I get a new connection. So uh, so what I'm going to do is hash the uh, incoming JID. OK, um, so if, if I already have it, obviously I don't want to draw again. So uh, otherwise, I'm just going to draw myself a uh, nice little circle. Um, I also have some CSS, which will handle the circle part. Uh, Um, and what I'll do in here as well is I'll drop an identifier. Uh, OK, and what I'll do then is I, in order to show you the fact that you are connecting from different domains, I'll uh, change the border color of the circle to a hash of the domain that you're on. So. Uh, OK. Uh. Sorry, I should have got some music for this, really, shouldn't I? Uh. Uh. 
And lastly, uh, actually, we'll just leave that. Cool. Right, so I've now made a draw function. So next thing, I'm going to listen for a chat message. I promise you, it won't be too much longer. Uh, so socket.on xmpp.chat. Actually, first of all, I've forgotten this. I need to tell the server I'm online because I may be connected, but haven't told it that I want to receive updates. So first of all, let's just say to the server I'm online. Cool, right, I'm online and I want to receive updates. Okay, so socket.on xmpp.chat.message. Uh, and this will pass me through a nice uh, message which is just the content and the who sent it to me. Uh, so let's go. Uh, so first of all, we need to draw um, a circle. Uh, and then we just need to listen to, uh, to what you've said to me and just shift your circle about. So uh, if I create the hash again. OK. Uh, So if we want to go up, we will pick up our uh, uh, no, it's minus equals. Uh, and we'll just shift it by 10 pixels. Cool. Is anyone actually logged into the client? Everyone logged in okay? Yeah, cool. Okay, so up, down, and um, we'll just add 10 pixels on. When we're going to go right, we will, uh, or left even, uh, we'll head left. Now, hopefully, oh look, someone's already there. So if you guys want to start uh, shifting, I'm guessing it's not actually, uh, I'm guessing I've got this wrong. Um, okay, well, in the UK we have a show called Blue Peter, uh, who, um, if when they build something, they always have the line, here's something I made earlier, so here's something I made earlier. And there we go. That's everyone moving around the screen from all the different servers. Uh, and there may be a little bit of lag, but that's because uh, I am connected to a server on the east coast of the US. That's then connected to my XMPB server, which is in Munich, uh, which is then connected to a server somewhere in the world, depending on which one you guys have connected to. That then talks back to a server on the east coast of the US, and then comes back to Berlin to talk to you. So it's going a long way. Uh, but as you can see, that's everyone uh, throwing things from various different servers. So there's Polish servers, uh, US servers, British servers, French servers, American servers, but they're all talking to my server in Munich without any additional code. So in summary, um, XMPP is a secure, scalable, uh, Real-time messaging system, it's scalable because uh, when you get a thousand users, rather, or tens of thousands of users, you don't just, um, you know, uh, cluster or get more servers, you just create a new domain, stick a new post. So it's very scalable, it really helps, it's, essentially it's a really easy way to help rebuild a decentralized web. Um, and you get lots of extras for free as well, so I um, wanted to keep it very light, hope that was okay. Thanks very much.